Hi, I'm Chris Meyer of Learning Modular, and in this video I'd like to explore the facts behind the legend of the Moog CP3 type mixer. Some say that the massive sound of the original Moog Modular is not just due to its classic transistor ladder low pass filter, but also to the character of its CP3 oscillator mixer, especially when this mixer is driven into saturation, which is particularly easy to do with this module. When we take a glance at the schematic for the CP3 mixer, we see a few things that are different compared to what you might find in a modern mixer in a modular synth. For one, there's transistors instead of op amps. Two, you'll notice that its power supply connections are plus 12 volts and minus 6 volts. That implies some sort of asymmetry, but maybe not what you might assume. It has what's called a passive mix bus, which means there's no buffering between the inputs and the summing connections. As a result, there's crosstalk between the channels, and this means that the output is limited to the max level of any one input, and we'll demonstrate that later on. It even has separate positive and negative or inverted outputs, and believe it or not, those two outputs sound different from each other. We'll start our explorations by seeing what this style of mixer does to a sine wave, and the resulting harmonic distortion as it's driven into saturation. Then we'll explore what happens to sawtooth waves, which are a more typical type of input you would use for a classic East Coast synthesizer patch. I'm starting off with a sine wave coming from an expert sleeper's disting into an IntelliGel buff molt, and then into my WD Pro output. The other outputs for my multiple are going to a tuner and also to my oscilloscope. I'm using patch 4C on the disting, their FM oscillator, because it has a particularly pure sine wave. And when we switch to the oscilloscope, there's the shape of the sine wave, and you'll see we only have this one spike here for its fundamental harmonic. If I turn on the cursors, you'll see that its peak voltages are roughly in the area of plus and minus 8 volts. So that's the normal output from this oscillator. Now let's pull out that output, run it into an input, on an STG Soundlabs dot mix, which is based on the CP3 design, and then patch from the output of this mixer back into my buffered molt. I have the mixer set to the positive output right now. As I start to bring up the input level, you'll see our sine wave appear, but you'll also notice that there's some additional harmonics present. Namely, there's a strong second harmonic there. And I'll take this up right before it starts to clip which is right around here. So we have a strong second harmonic when we're using the positive output of the dot mix. And when I switch over to the negative output, you'll notice that we don't have that second harmonic. So already we see that the positive output has more harmonic distortion than the negative output does. Next, let's start to drive an input stage into distortion. As I do so, you'll see a lot of additional harmonics appear and you hear a little bit of a high-end buzz there in the sound. You'll also notice that the excursion of this waveform is less than plus or minus 6 volts, not the plus or minus 8 volts we have from the oscillator. So we're starting to clip before we get to the full range of that oscillator. I'm going to turn off the cursors, and watch what happens to the top of the sine wave as I keep driving more and more input. When I get to a certain point, you'll see this little notch appear at the top of the wave. This almost looks like a diode breaking down where it goes from not passing voltage to passing a voltage once you get over a certain threshold, and we get a lot more harmonics. I'm going to dial back just a little bit. That's just the bottom part of the waveform clipping. And then you hear this fizziness come in as the top of the waveform starts clipping. So I keep driving harder and harder. We're getting a more harmonically rich waveform. When I finally had full input, I'm getting very close to a square wave. You see the alternating odd harmonics are the strongest here, but we also have some even harmonics mixed in as well. As I pull down the input, we're getting closer to a trapezoid type wave, similar to the new dope frost later with this trapezoidal core. Okay, let's pull this back down, switch over to the negative output, and do the same thing all over again. As we do so, we'll keep pushing, until we start to get some clipping. Now we're just starting to get the bottom part of the waveform to clip. Just see some extra high harmonics mixing in. And now we're clipping the top of the waveform as well. But we don't have that strange little notch that we had when we used the positive output. Here's the positive output. I'll back off a little bit, you get that thin nasally sound, and switch over to the negative output. 
So that's another tip on using the CP3 mixer. If you indeed want a pure or at least a more bass heavy sound with less high end fizz, use the negative output. If you do want high harmonics and a little fizziness on the top, use the positive output. And you'll see we have a lot more in the way of high harmonics here. Okay, I'll turn that down to zero and switch to the sawtooth output on the expert sleepers. Now as I bring it up, we'll see our typical sawtooth waveform where every harmonic is present in this exponential decay. But as we push it harder, We'll start to get clipping down here on the negative side and that little bit of notch fizziness on the top side. I'm going to play around the volume level without the notch, with a little bit of a notch. And this actually gets close to the CS80 type of sawtooth waveform where an extra pulse has been added in just to give it a sharper edge. I'll keep pushing harder. As I do so, listen to the harmonic content. It gets bassier, and you'll notice that the fundamental here is much stronger compared to the second, third, and fourth harmonics. I'll back off the input. More of a sawtooth type of balance between the first, second, and third harmonics. But as I push harder, the fundamental comes more into play, so you have stronger bass the harder you drive the CP3 into overdrive or into clipping saturation. Let's pull that down for now. And let's add a second sawtooth waveform into this mixer. Take the output of my braids on the CS80 sawtooth to the second input and start to bring that up. So before I'm in clipping, we have your typical detuned sawtooth sound. As I drive harder, listen to the bass harmonics. the fundamental gets a lot more powerful. So the secret to the CP3 is, the harder you drive it, the stronger the fundamental gets and the bassier it gets. And that is what contributes to the massive sound of overdriving the CP3 mixer. No overdrive. Lots of overdrive. That's how it's changing the tone of the sound. Okay, listening to a steady patch is one thing, but let's listen to it in a sequence. Now I have a sequence running with a considerably more complex patch. And just for contrast, I'm using a very un like filter. I'm using an Oberheim SEM clone from Dopefurt. Now right now I have a fairly thick sawtooth wave coming out of the Dopefurt subharmonic generator. And for a second oscillator, I've got the braids doing a particularly nasally sawtooth, just so you can tell them apart. Now listen what happens to the level of the braids output, this nasally sound, when I start to bring in the A113 subharmonic generator. It will start to suppress the volume of the braids rather than both adding equally to the final signal. That's the passive mix bus inside the CB3, kind of acting as a sort of auto level circuit. Now it can create some cancellations you don't want, but it does keep things in line level wise. Now let's start to overdrive this mixer and listen to the bass content. You hear that really heavy bass coming in? That's from overdriving the CB3. If I knock it down, The sound doesn't have quite the body to it compared to overdriving this mixer. Now again, I could go to the negative output. I want something not quite as fizzy. It's a little bit more rounded of a sound. If I want a little bit more in the way of high harmonics, I'll use the positive output, which we saw adds a little bit more harmonic distortion. Let's go ahead and open up the filter a little bit. Thinner, thicker, more bass heavy. And that's the secret to the CB3 style mixer. It has a lot of distortion as you drive past about 12 o'clock on the dials, but also 
that distortion comes in the form of increased bass as you drive it to its maximum level. And that's what creates a heavier sound as a result. 